Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice Speaker, respected delegates, esteemed colleagues, friends and guests, our affiliate leaders, fellows, residents and students, the future of our profession, and of course our wonderful and outstanding AOA staff. It is my distinct honor and privilege to help welcome all of you to the 100th annual meeting of the American Osteopathic Association's House of Delegates. I come to you approximately a year after initially being introduced to you with no less enthusiasm, excitement and passion for serving all of you and helping to move the AOA and our profession into the next century. As I reflect on my last year of service, I would like to pause for a moment and honor the outstanding contributions of your president, Dr. Ronald Burns. He's a great advocate for the profession, a wonderful colleague, a dear friend, and he has served us all well with distinction as the AOA's president. We thank him for his service and he will be missed, although I know he will continue his service to the AOA and to the profession in many ways to come. I was also very thankful to serve the Board of Trustees. What a wonderful and outstanding group of individuals committed to the profession and advancing the osteopathic profession into the future. I'm also very thankful for all of our members who have volunteered their time to serve on a bureau, council, or committee because we are stronger collectively than we ever could be individually. All of you have helped move the organization along exponentially this year, and I'm very thankful for all of your efforts. The last year, I made some distinct promises to all of you. One of those promises was about communication, that we would communicate openly and transparently and collaborate on important decision-making. I hope through your own experiences with me and the AOA this year, you've seen that we have made good on that promise and this is the way that the AOA will function going forward. And this is the way that I intend to serve you as your CEO. We also approached you with a $4.5 million deficit budget. I promised you I would try never to come to you with such a request again. We will not do so this year as we've created a budget that serves the mission and the membership very well and also creates a modest surplus. We've also worked very hard this past year to make sure that your generosity was not taken advantage of. We, don't, we know that you were willing to let us use reserves to balance our budget. However, we worked very hard to make sure that we managed the budget and our budget did not manage us. We have eliminated the $4.5 million deficit and we've actually created a roughly $2 million surplus that we will infuse back into the organization in service of our members and the profession. I also spoke to you about our integrated goals. We had eight organizational goals. We have completed every single one of them. We had 50 departmental goals. Now, some of them were never intended to be completed during this fiscal year, but 38 have been completed and the remaining 12 are in various stages of completion. So I'm very excited to let you know that your staff has been very productive this year and we are serving as best we can your needs and making sure that we take the needs of the profession to heart. The commitment of the staff is clear as we've identified 69 additional value added projects that we believe would be of service and value to the organization, to the members and those that we serve. 39 of those have been completed and again, the remainder are in various stages of completion. I can't wait till next year to let you know how much progress we have made in the upcoming year. Adversity bonds us. Our profession thrives through adversity. We've proven this time and time again since 1874, and COVID-19 is no different. We may not be the largest organization in healthcare, but I will assure you, we have had one of the most notable voices during this pandemic. Our staff has worked very hard to make sure that we have risen to the occasion to serve the profession, represent the profession with all of you, and make sure we created resources for our members. Just a few examples in public policy, physician education and CME, communications, and of course the AOIA, we have created over 14 webinars that have been viewed over 11,000 times, over 11,000 emails have been sent to members of Congress, and we've conducted over 30 town halls with either members of Congress or state senators. We want to make sure that you have a direct line to your lawmakers, 
And so the osteopathic voice is heard when any decisions are being made in healthcare and specifically with this pandemic. It's now time to focus our energies on the future. We spent a lot of our time this past year stabilizing our foundation. We didn't ignore the future, but we were building toward a better AOA. One of the initiatives put into place to make sure that we could solidify our foundation and serve our members was to develop a staff that was committed to service. Anyone, including any new senior leadership team member or any staff member joining the AOA in this last year was advised that selfless servant leadership was expected from them. If any individual could not put the organization before their needs, they need not apply. The organization exists in service to our members, of course, to our board of trustees, to all of you, to our profession, and to all other stakeholders that we serve, including our affiliates and the American Osteopathic Foundation and so many others. Too many to mention today. I'm looking forward to looking toward the future with this solidified base and foundation, making sure that we envision what the future looks like. And that future is really focusing on the goals that President Ely has defined. Dr. Ely and I have a strong and collegial relationship and we've developed goals together that he will share with you today. We will also further develop departmental goals like we did this past year and I'm excited to consider our report next year and let you know how far we've come with the AOA. Now it's time to further actualize our shared vision. We just completed our membership survey. We heard from so many of you. We're going to put your words into action. We're also changing our branding campaign. In the past week, I've met with the four quarter finalists for marketing and ad firms. They all asked the same question. Will we still use the doctors that do campaign? Well, I advise them we could, but it must tell the osteopathic profession's story. And we have to, they and we have to answer one very critical question. Doctors that do what? We do have a distinctive profession and we need to make sure that people aren't just aware of us, they don't just know us, they should know everything about the osteopathic profession. I will borrow some words from President Burns and past President Nichols from last year. We deliver modern medicine through the lens of the osteopathic profession and philosophy. We need to tell that story better than we ever have before. And the new branding campaign is designed to do that. Members of this momentous 100th annual House of Delegates meeting, thank you so much for the opportunity to serve you. Thank you for your wisdom and guidance as you help to govern this organization and our beloved profession. Thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful House of Delegates.